guys, welcome back to another episode. Well, not another episode. Another episode, but not a new, but a new series, a total new series. We are going to take an aircraft all around the USA. And you're probably thinking, you're crazy. And yes, I am. It's going to take hundreds of episodes to complete this journey. It will probably take, I don't know, years to complete. I don't know about years. Let me think about this. So if it... 24 times 32 equals that. Yeah, it will take at least a year or two to finish. But I know another guy who's doing a... But I know another YouTuber who's planning to do a flight around the world in two years. And, and due to his lack of videos, I highly doubt it'll be that much. I think it'll it'll take him like three or four years to complete the entire journey. But time's a wasting. Let's grab our aircraft. Oh, what aircraft was I looking for again? Uh, surprisingly, we're gonna, I'm going to get us on the Cessna 172 Skyhawk. Because, and you know, we're going to be taking breaks there and there. We're just going to be flying, and we're going to be following the interstates and all that, and sometimes going off the interstates, sometimes not. Depends. So, here's our aircraft. Oh, volume. Let's put that up. Uh, we're going to fly out of my local airport. Well, it's not my local airport. There's an airport even closer to this one, but... But I can't show you where I live, so we have to go as close as possible. So, remember my last FSX video. Ugh, whatever, let's just do Connecticut. I would do even closer. But, I've got to do it from Danbury. Uh, we'll do a GA ramp. Cause I, let's make it realistic, like we're actually departing out of the, uh, out of the airport. And it's not like some cheesy, I don't know. Uh, let's see something. So... Let's see what time we're going to fly. Let's fly out on August the 14th, the year 2023. I'll be 20 in 2023. That'll be weird when that happens. Uh, uh, let's do that. That seems pretty good. Uh, flight planner? We don't need a flight planner. Well, maybe we should. But we're going to do VFR. So that we don't get told which direction to fly and we can still fly where we want, the way we want. We're going to be following the interstates because if I try to fly using the GPS... Forget it. I mean, I could do pretty well with a road GPS, but... Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to fly from... To the wonderful city of New... I mean, not city. State of New Jersey, and we're going to be flying into Newark Liberty. I just want to... In this episode, I just want to get out of the state of Connecticut, out of the state of New York, and into the state of New Jersey. And to, into Newark Liberty. Direct. Yeah, so in reality, pilots would want to fly this way, but we're not going to fly this way. We're going to fly out and follow Interstate 84 this way. Then we're going to take the I-684 down this road, and it goes back here. And then we're going to take something called the Hutchinson River. Which goes about here. We take it to what, we, and then take it to some, and then take it to this. Part. Okay, well, not gonna tell you every single. 
And eventually we're going to go here, and then this is the George Washington Bridge. We'll follow that down the New Jersey Turnpike. And eventually we'll contact Newark Liberty and land and park. Cruising altitude, uh, this is hard, this is tricky. Let's think, uh, how about about 6,000? Yeah, let's go for 6,000 feet. 6,300, that's a good altitude. Well, hold on a second. I don't want, s yeah, no, because we're just, we're not going to be actually at that cruising altitude, but we're not going to be mostly at that cruising altitude, so let's do something like, because we're going to be following the road, we're not going to be, like, we're going to be really close to the ground, so let's do a cruising altitude of about, I don't know, 500. 500. I think 500 will be good. But we'll do that just to make sure. Yeah, let's just do that. Because we're not going to be flying at... Yes, I want you to take to the outer airport. Okay, so time for some weather. So user to find weather. Let's see. Do we want it to rain that day? I don't want it to rain at all. Like, obviously... It should just rain, but whatever. We'll have... We'll make it a non-cloudy day. We'll make it a clear day. Just... Uh, five knot winds. Light turbulence. Temperature. Well, in August. <laughs> About, I don't know... An afternoon. So let's try, I don't know, 80... Nah, let's go for... 80 degrees. Let's go for 80 degrees. But to specific weather station for for New Jersey, we'll make it the same kind of day. But let's just put the winds in a different direction, uh, and we'll put some more temperature because normally it's warmer in New Jersey than in Connecticut. Alrighty, I think that works for us. Let's make sure it kept your settings good. Alright, let's hit the skies. Or my video is still downloading. Alright. Yeah, we'll make it so that we're actually departing. We'll make it so that we're actually departing from the gate and it's not like... Oh, your plane's on the runway! Hurry up before your plane gets crushed by another GA aircraft. Now, obviously, I've disabled GA aircraft so that I'm, like, one of the only aircrafts. Obviously, there should be more GA aircrafts, but we'll see. Oh, we're not going to take that Hutchinson River Parkway. We're going to take Interstate 287 to Interstate 95, which goes a little bit out of the way, but it's more of a direct route. Well... It's a little out of the way, but at least it's it's kind of a coastal route. I think you'll enjoy it. The only thing I'm afraid of is that the game might crash when we get when we are going through New York City. Let's just pray that it's not going to happen cuz if the game crashes, then we won't make it to Liberty. We'll just New York Liberty. We'll just take off at another time like nothing happened. Anyhow, so here we are. This is our clock to track where we go or all around the U.S. Uh, that's our aircraft. So let's head into the... Let's listen to the Danbury Atis. Let's not even listen to it. Let's just watch the scroll by. ATIS just means Automatic Terminal Information Service. Yes, yeah, so wind, 18 degrees at 5 knots, visibility is great, sky condition clear, temperature 27 degrees Celsius. Uh, well, temperature 2992, visual runway 35 in use, VFR aircraft, state of rest, flight, all aircraft movement, cool trip, structure, advice controllers, contact you have. Okay, cool. Well, that's cool. So we're departing southbound. Well, we're actually departing west, so we're going to depart west and then go south, so we should do west.
The only reason why I'm using this aircraft is because I wanted a clock to track, like, when we got to other airports. I want it to be realistic, like, you make it to an airport at a certain time, and you need a part, and I just want to make it realistic so that I didn't, like, show up at an airport at, like, 3 o'clock planning to, like, make it look realistic. And then I ended up accidentally, uh, I don't know. Huh, where are we supposed to go? There we go. Supposed to taxi down this strip here. Let's put up some brakes. Okay. Let's just make sure the aircraft isn't like gonna fly or something like that. Well, fly, but you know what I mean. Yikes. So. Whoa! What happened? Is this runway 35? I'll check. I'll just go back past the whole short line over here. And then I'll break on the put brakes in the aircraft. And spot. I see uh flyby. That's 35, oh my golly. We're at the runway. So we will contact the tower. Now remember, we actually have all the power in the world to when we take off and like that, because remember, there's no GA aircraft enabled. In real life, we might have to worry. But luckily in this game, that ain't the case. So let me think. So we're departing north. Departing 35 degrees north. So we're going to meet up with 84 down there. Yeah, that's US-7, and this is 35. This is runway 35. Is this it? Hold on a second. This is runway 35. That's runway 26. This is 35, right? Let's just make sure inside the cockpit. Yeah, we're going 30. We're going 346 degrees. This is definitely. Now let's see something. So. Uh, let me see something. So, uh, let's. Oh shoot! Pour on the throttle. Shoot. Uh, this is 84. I made a mistake in my last video and said that this was US 7, but this is this is actually I 84. We're gonna head in this direction. On Interstate 84. This is toward the uh, city. You're probably asking me to land on the. Uh, maybe we should have like read the uh, papers before we took off. Now we have to read them and try not to crash in the process. Maximum structural speed. Never so 129 knots. How fast are we going? Well, that's the altimeter. That's the vertical speed. That's the tachometer. That's our airspeed, and that's pretty good. So I've got to say, that's pretty good. We can have a tiny bit more power. We get a tiny bit more power to the engine. All right, so we're in the air. It's about two o'clock, and we're in the air. Two o'clock on Monday. And by the way, the traffic on the highways have no resemblance to the time. So, if it's midnight, that doesn't that doesn't lessen the traffic. If it's I don't know three if it's like four or five o'clock on a on a on a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, it 
it's still like this. Now, this highway is not very prone to traffic. This portion of I-84. It's kind of like a, uh, what do you call it? It's sort of a, how do you say? It's just a highway. Now, in real life, we would not be able to travel at this speed in a car. This is just to, like, simulate a road trip in an aircraft, because obviously we can't take a road trip. I wish there was something like Let me lower this volume because it's just like, way too loud. Um, I do wish, however, that... And this begins our long journey. So this is I-684 right here. Uh, so this is a big cloverleaf interchange right here. It's a huge, believe me, it's a huge cloverleaf. Now, toward the city is this way on I-684. Remember, I live in this area, so I know my way around, even by aircraft. The only reason why I got lost in, um, right near my current location is because I accidentally made two lefts. I shouldn't have made that first. If I wouldn't have, like, I made, I was on the right, but I accidentally made a left, and I was supposed to go straight. Then I made another left, which just made me go back in the same direction from whence I came, except I was farther up north. So, that explains a lot. So this is the I-684 corridor, and I-684 is a spur of 84. And it travels all the way from Brewster, New York, to a town, to a to a suburban city called, like it's not a city, it's sort of like a city, it acts like one, but it's actually the city that's the farthest, that, it's actually the city that's the closest, it's the closest city to New York City, it's the closest town to New York City that isn't necessarily part of New York City. And now that we're speeding up a little bit, I want to make sure that we're not... So I think it's speeding up. Oh my goodness, we were like flying so... Okay, we need to quickly dip because we are flying way too high above the interstate and I need to keep track of the interstate so we don't get lost. This is the way to travel. Instead of taking an RV across country, just take an aircraft. It's it's ha it's double the it's it's twice as fast and you get and you get to fly over traffic jams but i think that the like the feel of actually driving the disc is like better than like flying over cuz when you're flying over it it's cooler but in another way it's sort of more it's like you're cheating, so I'm sorry. I call it, like, cheating, but obviously it is cheating, but whatever. So that's a train line that heads into the city. We're not going to follow it because even though the train line takes the most direct route into the city, I am not following it because it's going to take us into downtown Manhattan, and then uh, when it disappears, I will get completely lost. And I... That train, those train tracks just keep disappearing, and I'm afraid if it disappears, that it's not going to be a lucky day for our trip. Yeah, we're going to make it realistic. We'll fly at night if we have to. We will seriously fly at night. I'm not making this a daytime trip. We have to sometimes fly at night. 
I forget what river that is. Um, I forget what river that is, but it's a river, all right, and it's a pretty. I forget what it's called. As we continue onward, even though we can actually go over 129 knots, we can only go to like 160 knots. I don't want to go over 100. Now, right now, 100 knots is only about 90 miles an hour, or 80 miles, or 85 miles an hour. I don't have a converter on me right now, and I. Pretty gosh dang sure uh, about that. So we're headed into some civ some civilization over here. We will just be flying Newark Liberty and afterwards. we will end this video. So, right now we're flying BFR, which just means visual flight rules. Seminar basically means we are 700 feet above sea level, which pretty high considering the fact that look, look how close the ground is to us. Yeah, so here there's usually a lot of business here. It's not just it's not a lot of that. Yes, yeah, so. I believe that would be a parkway of some Yeah, we're gonna take the I-287 corridor. We're not gonna take the um the parkway because parkway is just gonna make it more confusing. Well not confusing per se, but oh no, never mind, that's probably not the parkway. Well that probably was. Can't believe that it wasn't shown though. However, we have to find some way out of this area. And we will visit other cities along the way, don't get me wrong. For now, we're just going to fly to the, find the George Washington Bridge and fly over the George Washington to New Jersey and go to Newark. Don't know how long the video is going to be. Normally, a drive from my house to New Jersey is about two an hour and a half so it should not take more than an hour don't need I don't want my hand to get like all sweat make to make like all the sweat all over my um all over the I don't want my hand to sweat all over the joystick cause I'm holding a stick joystick right now flying along the road and which in real life if you were to actually fly along the road in real life, you would do many things. You would scare drivers on the road. And believe me, I've done a lot of fake scaring them. Now, surprisingly, this bit, this bit, is one lane. Normally, the entire highway is just three lanes all the way. All the way from I-84 to I-287. But, straight. So yeah, now this is an incline, I don't normally, tr what I don't like is that, look at the road texture, but seriously, the road texture looks out of control, and I, and I don't mean that in a good way either. That's a, t that's a radio tower, I've never noticed that. Next time I take I-684 in real life, I better check that out. When am I taking I-684 next? Uh, I don't think for a while. Probably not for like, I don't know, a month. Maybe even more than that. Maybe less than that. But next time I take I-684, I better look out for that radio tower. I never realized that. 
Maybe it's just for decoration, because most of this stuff is decoration. I mean, in real life, there aren't many trees over here. Well, there are many trees, but they're more, like, claustrophobic. They're more, like, claustrophobic, meaning that they're more close together than other, than these trees. These trees just make it look pretty, but they don't make it look pretty enough. So we're gonna, we're soon gonna be passing by the, uh, Westchester County Airport, which is the closest civilian aircraft airport. Denver Aircraft doesn't have any civilian aircraft, but there are public flights on, like, by, on, like, biplanes from, I don't know, yeah, from Danbury, they, they fly to Nantucket every weekend, every Friday afternoon, and then Sunday afternoon, they fly them back. It's interesting. But sometimes just looking at all these hills and houses and trees, it just gets a little boring. Even though we're like talking and all that, I will just talk and like, the only way that you're going to be like occupied during the entire trip is if I'm like chatting most of the time. Oh yeah, you see the um... The lights or the uh, Pappy lights or whatever you call them. I, I forgot what Pappy stands for. I think it stands for like something approach blank. I don't know. Something approach. It. Something approach pattern indicator. Yeah. Approach pattern indicator. I think that's what it means. And it tells you whether. And if you're flying at night. It will be pretty um, useful when you're flying at like night. But we are passing cars, and that traffic's moving at about 60 miles an hour. So I say we're going about 95 to 100 miles an hour right now. I don't know how fast we're going physically. Let's take a time check. Let's pause the game. Check the time in the game. It's 2.15. Alrighty. Let's continue flying. 81 degrees Fahrenheit on a clear sky like this. Oh, if you'll notice, do you see way over there? Can you see those two tiny little, uh, I don't know, uh, those tiny little skyscrapers all the way over there? on the very peak of the horizon, that thin strip of land. It's not even a strip of land. It's actually the Bronx, Manhattan, New York City, that tiny little strip of land. And we'll soon be there in about 15, 20, 20, 30 minutes at the most. There was a boat back there. Wonder if any, oh, there's the um, runway right there. If I wanted to, I could just divert, or well, I could just divert and land at Westchester County in a heartbeat if there was an emergency, but obviously we're flying to Newark, and I didn't put emergencies in the game. The only emergency is if, like, we run out of fuel, which we're not gonna run out of fuel, considering the fact that it's gonna just be refueling every time we arrive. Um, this is getting confusing. Is this the highway? Is this I-287? Well, this is the inter- this is still the interstate. Yeah, can you see that, like, bridge and that thing in this- in the horizon? Like, the very tip of the horizon. You barely can see it. That's New York. And that's where we'll be. And I don't know if it's New Jersey or if it's New York, but... The unrealistic thing about this game is that are the parkways. In this game, the AI cars are not like 
specifically rerouted on like certain routes and if you're not too careful you'll find out that there are literally trucks on truck restricted roads and that's the worst thing about this game because the, the traffic's not very routed correctly because they're not going to give a heck about it considering the fact this is a flight simulator and not a truck simulator. Yeah, so this is the Interstate 287. We're going to be going eastbound. So we're just going to fly over this corridor. In real life, we'd have to get off there and then take a ramp, which would take us to this highway here. But you see that truck over there. Trucks are not allowed on this Hutchinson River Parkway bit. And that's another truck who... All trucks must exit. Yeah, none of the trucks are going to listen to me. To that stuff. You see, there are trucks all over this Hutchinson River. There was a truck behind another truck, and then more trucks on the other side of it. Where, in reality, trucks should be headed down this road. And... You see the coast down there? We'll fly down this corridor of I-287, and then it's coastal drive the rest of the way. Well, if you're really driving on 95 in this corridor, you will not ever... You will not ever see the coast. Because there's buildings and trees and exits and other stuff blocking you from seeing the beautiful coast. But literally, I uh, back it. So, um. Remember when I said earlier that driving a truck is like driving a 10 ton wrecking ball? Well, flying an aircraft. It's like flying. A, it's an aircraft. Not like this aircraft. I mean like a, a Boeing 747 or an Airbus A380. It's like flying. I don't know how much it weighs exactly. Probably weighs about, I don't know, 50 tons. 50 ton wrecking ball. Imagine 50 tons. 50 ton wrecking ball would explode all these houses. They wouldn't just, just de destroy, they would like implode. Not implode, but yeah, you get the explode is, is when something's in the middle of a, of a, of a structure and that happens. Yeah, you see, we're headed into the suburbs now. We're headed into the suburbs now, so it's not going to be a very frame rate friendly journey. Especially, um, but I have flown this route, and it hasn't been a very big problem, actually, so. I'm not too scared. I mostly turned off the um, general aviation aircraft because if I want to fly general aviation, then I just wanted to, uh, you understand. So we're still flying at a steady knot. We're still flying at a, st yeah, you see, we're not very, just look at, just take a look at this frame rate. Yeah, I took out the clouds. It's a good thing I took out the clouds, because we're headed through frame rate killing sentry. Yeah, 95 is a pretty major interstate through this part. And it gets pretty congested during the, um... During, after labor hours. When everyone heads home from work. This highway... People have been reported to be driving for four hours just to get home via 95 and 287. I've heard it takes four hours for them to get home. Literally, it takes them like 
24 hours. That's how bad the traffic is. And on a normal day, it doesn't take it doesn't take more than an hour and a half to get to the city. And it takes four hours. That's two and a half extra hours. And you can see that this traffic is flowing pretty smoothly below us. In real life, that wouldn't be the case. And I think you can understand pretty well why. This frame rate is getting is getting killed right now. The frame rate. There's another tower, but it's too far away from the road. And since I'm not taking I-95 any time in the future, the frame rate's so bad that it's only like a frame a second. continue flying. So that's the Hutchinson River over there. Right now, we're going to be taking what's called the Cross Bronx Expressway. And the Cross Bronx Expressway, yeah, you can you just see, like, this would not lead me anywhere. Yeah, so... I-85 and the Hutchinson River Parkway cross over each other two or three times. They cross each other a huge load of times. Which is why I'm not even going to bother driving the distance between I-95 and that. It's literally a frame a second. That's how bad the frame rate is. Yeah, we're just going to take a portion of the uh, Hutchinson River so that we can just cut through. At this moment in time, it would just be better to just take the Cross Bronx across. But in real life, the Cross Bronx, you don't want to know. So we're going to take a portion of the Hutchinson River. But first, let us pause the game. Check out the timing. So that's 95. Doesn't look like any difference, but what's this? There's a truck on the Hutchinson River Parkway. More approach pattern indicator lights, or whatever you call them. Whatever you call Pappy. So yeah, it comes around here, and then we're just going to take the road from here. Now, it, it, yeah, it crosses over three times. In real life, this is a drawbridge. And this is in real life. Literally, my game just froze. That's how bad the frame rate is. So, the fastest way now is to actually take the Hutchinson River directly to where the Cross Bronx is. This is currently not the Cross Bronx. This is right now still 95 Cross Westchester. Not Cross Westchester. Cross Westchester is 287. Who gets a which gets a decent amount of traffic as well. This game... Oh, shoot. Pause the game quickly. I'm not checking my map sources. I'm just headed in to check the time again, and I want to, like, see the, uh, see that. I just want the correct lights on. We do not need pito heat. We do not need pito heat in this weather. 81 degrees Fahrenheit. That's an insane temperature. Now, 
what I'm gonna do, that's called the White Stone Bridge, and we won't be flying over it. It's a suspension bridge that goes over the, what do you call it? I don't know what that's called. The East River, I think it's called. I don't know what it's called. No, it's not the Hudson River. The Hudson River goes... Okay, first of all, that's the Hudson River over there. That's the Hudson River. So, that's the I-278 corridor. That goes to... That's called... I, don't, I forget what that's called. That's called the Bruckner Expressway. This is the Cross Bronx Expressway, which we will be flying over. It will lead us directly to over the George Washington. And no, this is not the Hudson. This is... I forget what. I think this is the Alexander Hamilton Bridge, which is not really a bridge where you have to pay a toll over. It's just named that because it, they wanted to give it a name, so they gave it a name. I forget what these highways are, so please don't quote me on this. I think that that's the I-87. I think that's I-87. This is the so the Cross Bronx, and whoa, come on, aircraft. That's how bad it is that I cannot control where the aircraft goes, and I don't want to crash into that, uh, tower there. What's this? Oh, that's some pedestrian bridge. Don't know why they need a pedestrian bridge, but whatever. So now things are going to get con a little confusing. Not so confusing that, I don't that bad things happen, but confusing enough that, say... You might get lost. For this portion of I-95, the road goes underneath a tunnel. I don't have the darn time and uh, stabilization. So let's, because I am So here's what happens. This is the Henry Hudson Parkway. Also, trucks on it, which is completely unrealistic. Yes, yeah, so that's a tunnel, which is why the road is un- which is invisible, like the road. Of course, when we have to cross over the bridge, it's like that. I just won't cross, I just won't contact him. So now that we're going to be facing away from the city, but now we have an entire new challenge to face with. And it's a little, and it's a little metropolitan area called Newark, New Jersey. This is the George Washington Bridge. That's a, currently a tunnel over there, which is why you can't see the road. That's actually the Henry Hudson. That was, I don't know what that was. And yeah, the texture is pretty good on the on the George Washington over there. All right, well now that we're comfortable, I'll connect to New York approach. So now this is going to get a little confusing, so I need to pay attention. So right now, this is after the bridge, and that's the palace. I don't want to accidentally end up on the Palisades Parkway, heading in the total wrong direction. Alrighty, guys. So... We're getting close to Newark. This is the um, part where uh, the um, where the new this is where the New Jersey Turnpike begins. That this is a city called Fort Lee. Pretty soon we'll be reaching Teaneck, which is the city where 
I-80 begins. Now, we're not going to be taking I-80. We're going to be headed south. We're probably going to head to, like, I don't know, Western Virginia via Interstate 81 eventually. But right now, let's focus on getting to Newark Liberty. And over there, that's Teterboro Airport. That's Teterboro. That's I-80. That heads to, like, the other cities, like, um... Lottie, Hackensack, blah, blah, blah. And other cities. We're in, we just went through Fort Lee. So now this is the part where it's like a cool down from, from New York City. Like, you have no idea when you're driving here that New York City is, like, if you were to be blindfolded and teleported to this area and then asked where you were, you would not be able to know if you were facing this direction, because this is, like, just a complete... So now this is where the New Jersey Turnpike splits between a western spur that way and an eastern spur that way. We are going to be taking the western spur today, because we have to take one spur and not the other. Uh, let's see if it's appeared on the, um, new, nearest airport list. Uh, airport's farther away from you. Far- No! Airport's closer. Thank heavens. Newark Liberty. To Newark Liberty Tower. Repl request full stop landing. Alrighty, so, looks like we're good, but first, I want to know where runway 22 left is, so, runways, 22 left, runway 22 left is over there, surprisingly, but we're not close enough to know exactly, like, where it is, so, we need to get closer to Newark Liberty, and then, eventually, we'll focus on it, oh my god, oh my we nearly, like, catapulted, but... Luckily, I acted, otherwise... Yeah, I think you know what would happen. So, don't quote me on what road this is. I think this is... I think this is... I don't know what this highway is. I seriously don't know. It's not Interstate 78, though, because Interstate 78's down there. Maybe that's the Bayonne Bridge. I don't know, but we're nowhere near Jersey City. We haven't even gotten, we, we haven't even gotten past the Southern Mixing Bowl. We're not even near Newark Liberty. If we were near Newark Liberty, I would say yeah, but we're nowhere near Newark Liberty. So we're nowhere near that. So, I need to figure out where New York Liberty is before we even get there, because I might need to adjust not landing. I'm going to now see how where we are now. See where we are relative to runway 22 left at Newark. 22 left is over there. Oh, I think I see it. I think I see it. Now, before we end up going insane and wild and crazy, let me get back into this view. I think now we should head into, into the cockpit and put on some flaps. They will deploy while we are landing. These are taxi lights. I just want to, like, check out a few instruments fuel tank selector 
Wait, what is this? I don't understand this. So now, let's head into the, back to the tail. We should now see flaps deploy. So now the aircraft's going to start acting a little funny. Because we now deployed some flaps. I just want to pour on some throttle to see how this thing's going to act. Landing speed on this thing is around 50 knots. I think we're good with these, with the speed at the moment. I think we're also done with um, worrying about the, uh, the road systems, because we're landing now, so no more road system following. We're done with the New Jersey Turnpike. Now let's head into the cockpit and land this sucker. Now, I am horrible with landing um, jet aircraft, jetliner aircraft on this game. I always crash. I don't know why. It's because of the annoyingness of the game. I'm try pretty sure, but I don't know. I want we are we already have automatic um. What do you call it? Automatic. Um, we have automatic brakes because the brakes aren't very, like, hold on, back to the virtual cockpit. Virtual cockpit is just basically, it's the cockpit, but it makes it look like you're actually in the cockpit instead of, I don't know. So currently we're going, I don't know, around, oh my. Oh, let's read this warning. Oh. Because this is our air because this aircraft is our home for the next like month or two in the game time of game time, but not real time. Assure that all conta contaminants, including water, are removed from fuel and fuel system before flight. Failure to assure contaminant free fuel and need and need all safety instructions and owner advisories prior to flight can result in bodily injury or death. So yeah, that's how dangerous flying is, guys. So let's get aligned with the runway now. I'm afraid in the low frame rate that I'm gonna crash. It's not very... No, I play a tablet simulator. It's a flight simulator, and I barely ever crash. The only time I crash, really, is when, I don't know, I accidentally stall or something. Because in real life, you can look down and you have a co-pilot with you. One plane is, one pilot is doing all the work of, like, setting up the flaps and all that, and the other, and the co-pilot is just... And the, all the co-pilot is doing is, like, is following the pilot's orders, I'm guessing. That's how I would do it. it sounds pretty efficient to do it that way. You'd be like, Co-pilot, put 30, put 30 degree flaps. And then co-pilot puts 30 degrees flat. Now for a Cessna, you don't really need a co-pilot. Because first of all, normally Cessnas are like not private aircraft. They're private. You can book them and other people can ride in them. I don't know what the best speed to land in an Cessna is, so I'm afraid that... But... Relax. I'm not a good... I'm not a great pilot, but I'm not that bad, actually. I'm not the best pilot in the world or anything spectacular like that. So this is one of the, like, biggest intersections I've ever seen in, like, my entire area, even though this is pretty far from my area, like, Interstate 78 is there, then you have a truck lane and a car lane, of course there are trucks in the car lane and cars in the truck lane, well, truck lane, well, truck lane, heck with truck lane, considering the fact it's not really a truck lane, it's just trucks and cars can go there, but it's a car only lane, it's more realistic in how to call it, so, short final, overall the traffic, 
No, the only way I can really successfully land this aircraft is like this. And I'm afraid to even land it because I'm afraid to even land my own aircraft. That's how bad I am at landing. So that's Interstate 95. Oh, uh, we are not aligned at, like, all, so maybe we want to get aligned. Oh, never mind. As long as I'm on the ground, I'm good with anything that involves getting safely on the ground. Anything that gets, that involves getting on the ground safer than a... Anything that involves being on the ground safer than a... Than a pain, than a... Being safer than a penguin not on thin than a penguin on thick ice is not arguable. At all. So I hope that there's no aircraft landing because I wanna get in the cockpit. Lift flaps. Come on, I said lift flaps. Oh shoot! Alright, well, first, let's just contact ground. I don't care if we're behind this pulled short line. Just give me the parking. Yankee, Sierra. That's taxiway Yankee. I don't understand why it's not telling us to take out. Is that tax? Oh, it is. It's just telling us to go straight ahead. Let's go park this son of a gun aircraft. Before I start losing my mind. That's Interstate 78 in the very far distance. See? Taxiway Yankee. Four left, 22 right. That's 22 right, as you can clearly tell. even worse on the ground, the frame rate is even worse. Let's go find the general aviation parking now. Here's Taxiway Sierra. In real life, this would just be a ta This would just be a stop to refuel and take a quick break before the next journey, the next leg. In real life, if I was actually flying this thing, I would do longer than like hour-long legs and two-hour-long legs. I would be doing maybe like three or four hour legs, maybe even five hour legs. But yeah, I seriously wish there was enough free time in the day to do that kind of leg. 
most I can do is two hour legs. That's the most I can do. Any longer than that and forget. This is never mind a tax. Never mind taxi to general aviation parking. This is more like quest for aviation parking. All right, they were going a little too fast. I'm afraid that we're gonna like end up turning this bend, and it's gonna be right here. Even though it's not. This frame rate's so horrible that I'm losing my reaction, my re my uh, reflexes. There's the fuel box. Gasoline, petrol. I don't know what that said, but... Hit the brakes. And there's our lone GA spot. I didn't mean 200 feet away from our GA spot. I meant we were literally going to park at that very space and put the brakes. Let's pretend out of this that was an actual stop. The first, we are not pulled up all the way. We need to pull up just some, a few inches up. Farther. There it is. Break. Great, you donkey aircraft. Now you just blew right past. Well, let's just leave it at that. Nice, beautiful day. Newark Liberty International Airport. So, before we do anything, let us call the fuel truck. Fuel truck and route. Good, because we'll be, need, we'll be pretending as if we need fuel. So, let's turn off the avionics. The master switches. And the avionics. I thought that was a double switch, but apparently not. Don't need mixture. Fuel shut off, we don't need. We're just gonna... So we just cut off the power to the, uh... Aircraft, let's just make sure the fuel truck's coming before we quit off. Not a flyby. I don't want a flyby. I want a, what do you call it? Top down. See where the fuel truck is. In the meantime, you can see where 
everything is. You can see the corridor. Now let, let's just pretend that the fuel truck isn't coming. Let's just pretend. I just want to make sure that everything's off. And everything's going to be good for the next flight of this aircraft. Let's turn up the fuel pumps off. Beacons are off. Landing lights are off. Taxi lights off. Navigation lights off. Shoot, turn off turn on the aircraft again. I think you might have to turn on the aircraft again. Yeah, turn on the aircraft. I forgot to take note of the time. Oh, but first we need eight masters and avionics on first. Oh, never mind. We don't need the thing on. Oh, shoot. Instead of... Okay, but better. Okay, well. I think that's good enough. So, record the time. 14.51.34. I'll record that somewhere. And everything will be all good. But that's all for this episode of... Flight Around the U.S., I will see you guys for another episode, but instead it's going to be another episode of, I don't know, by the time this video gets uploaded, but whatever, I'll see you whenever.